In San Francisco, they are just gathering together now to be able to make sure there is nothing offensive happening with their high schools or their, uh, you know, or their, uh, their, uh, what you would call it, uh, elementary schools. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even know why you have them anymore. Nobody's going. Anyway, Lincoln High School is many one of the many San Francisco school names the advisory committee has uh, found to be problematic. Uh, the others include George Washington High School, Herbert Hoover Middle School, what a bastard that, and the Paul Revere K through eight. <laughs> What'd that guy do? What'd that guy do? Was he? No. You know what he was doing? He was calling a horse his then he got on the back of that horse and rode the horse did the horse care the british were coming maybe he thought the british would save him from his quote unquote master in the stables <laughs> uh but the sheep just uh, continue to go variety of criteria would uh, remove historic figures from the list including being slave owners uh known racist and white supremacists so Stu, you're out I'm I'm out for <laughs> the the Stu the producer school in uh, where is that where is that one uh, hell <laughs> in hell yeah <laughs> yeah well you can't because you're uh, mm-hmm. well you're a colonialist mm-hmm. uh, and mm-hmm. uh, you are you have been connected to human rights or environmental abuses the, uh, the environmental mm-hmm. abuses from their yeah. standards I don't think I could even deny amen mm-hmm. amen. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, Lincoln, the discussion around Lincoln centered around his treatment of First Nation peoples um, because uh, uh, that, that, that was offered first. Uh, once he met that criteria in that way, we didn't even belabor the point. Now, so you know, Lincoln freed all of the slaves about 10 years before the First Peoples released their slaves. So Lincoln didn't care about the Native American because, of, I guess, of their color. Um, so he didn't care about them. Uh, and, of course, we have to take him because, you know, he re- what did he ever do really for the black man? But he freed the slaves 10 years before the Native Americans did. Anybody <laughs> I got a problem with that one. It's I, unbelievable. And, and you know, today I look <sighs> up at MSNBC and Ibram Kendi is on talking about uh, how you know how to be an anti-racist. He's one of uh, the people who came up Evil. with that concept, white fragility, that whole thing. Yeah. And it's like I I've been talking about this and we said this on the air. They will be tearing down statues of Martin Luther King. Oh yeah. Oh, the, oh no no. Tearing yeah, were... them down. Oh yeah. That we are not far away from that. Here we are now. We're at the point now where Abraham Lincoln is going down. And I think it, it, you'd think, okay, well, wait, I think Abraham Lincoln maybe did more for black people than Martin <laughs> Luther King Jr. I think even Martin Luther King Jr. would probably admit to that. Yeah. But the, but it, it, there's a recency. I think I think you go timeline with this thing. Like you throw away the you know f- f- throw away the founding fathers, mm-hmm. George Washington. Mm-hmm. These people mm-hmm. were obviously haters. Mm-hmm. Now we're up to Lincoln, which mm-hmm. you'd think would be the the most impossible to turn around. But now they're going to try to do that. And then we'll have Martin Luther King. And then to eventually. The, dream, the impossible dream. It's not that impossible. <laughs> it really this is not, not impossible. Because I had a dream. We could we could get rid of that bastard Lincoln. And apparently we can do it. Apparently we can do it. Now, here's the thing. Uh, you, you know how weird the, the world is now? Um, the conservatives who allegedly hate all black people and hate Martin Luther King. We're going to be the ones standing up for Martin Luther King Boulevard and the Martin Luther King statue and yeah. the Martin Luther King school. I mean, so true. Hello. And we already are all, we're already there when it comes to his concepts. Mm-hmm. When it comes to uh, judging people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. You, the only people even attempting it now are conservatives. You know, you know why that connects with conservatives? Because the entire speech is based in the Declaration of Independence. Mm-hmm. He recognized that people are flawed, but this idea was not. People just have to live up to that idea. The left wants to throw that idea out. Can you tell me a better idea than all men are created equal? Hey, let's make a more 
perfect nation, not a perfect one, a more perfect nation that is always striving to live to its ideals and always looking back in the rearview mirror and going, well, screw that one up. Let's not do that one again. Create a more perfect nation where we have handcuffed the, the government, the oppressor. We have handcuffed that. And all you have to do is just be free, be responsible, be cool with other people being free. And that's it. That's it. Go your own way. And, you know, it'd be nice if you treated people really nicely as well. You don't have to, but it'd be nice. So am I allowed to burn down uh, cityscapes and, you know, auto zones because I feel like it? Can I do that? Well, are that's you, okay, right? Are you burning him down for Ulysses S. Grant or <laughs> against Louis, uh, uh, Ulysses S. Grant? Ulysses, such an old-timey name, got to burn it down yeah. because of him. You know what? This <laughs> one makes me happy. Do you know what other uh, other school is, uh, that elementary school that's being uh, closed? Uh, or, or being <laughs> Woodrow changed? Wilson? Uh, no, <laughs> no. They're going to skip over him. You watch. He has had, I will say, there have been some yep. examples across the country yep. where they've taken his name yeah, off of Princeton. it. And I'm torn over that because... Uh, he is you the worst to, president ever, or one of them. But it's, you have to remember the mistakes. Yeah, it's why we have scars. It reminds you to not do that one again. It's it, it is part of life. You make mistakes. You put a marker up. I mean, a statue of Woodrow Wilson is a scar. Oh, but you know what? Massively. I'm glad it's there. Because otherwise, if we would have erased him from history, I would have never been able to point out all the problems that we're doing now. Everything that we're doing now were his ideas. We're doing it right now. Mm. So how could I, how would I know that this was a bad idea if I couldn't go back and look at the time it was tried last time? Huge mistake. Massive racist. Klan went through the roof. I mean, hello. I think this is a huge problem with the the censorship online too. And that like they'll pe- people are like, oh, they've got to you know get uh, what's his face, um, uh, the guy who's always calling for the uh, the Million Man March. Uh, he's always g- calling for the killing of all Jews and oh, why am I not the, uh, Farrakhan? Farrakhan, uh, Farrakhan. Farrakhan, yeah. And the conservatives' response to online censorship was like, oh, I can't believe Farrakhan's still left up there to say whatever he wants. It's like I. Or do we not want a historical record of the crazy things Louis Farrakhan says? Yeah. I don't want to discourage him from saying any of it. I want to I would love to talk him out of it, right? I'd love to try to get him to change his mind. I don't think it's a good there's a good chance that's going to happen. But like what they talk about this with elected officials when they come out and they're like, "Oh, we're going to censor Donald Trump's tweets." It's like if you think Donald Trump is the worst person in the world and you think he's this big racist and you think he's Adolf Hitler, like having mind Kampf after the fact during that situation was really good we were able to see who this guy was and it was really important that we we didn't burn we didn't delete his book burn his book not publish his writings like we needed to know that we needed to think know how he came to those conclusions we needed to know uh so we could stop it in the future it's why you can't it's why you cannot uh take let's say the hadith uh and the quran and just two little snippets of it You have to get into it and understand it. You have to be able to read it. Then you can see the nuance and you can say, okay, some people read this book like we read the Bible where you don't, you know, it's not eye for an eye. Okay. Uh, New Covenant. Um, And some people look at this and say Sharia law because it says in the book Sharia law. It's eye for an eye. It's got to be that way. It's got to be that way. It's the only way you can understand But right now, we either take things out of context or we just don't care about them at all. So we don't read. It's the same thing with the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Who reads that anymore? Everybody's got an opinion on it. Everybody can tell you about it, but not really. (laughs) Not really. They can quote, if you're lucky, they can quote the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you're lucky... But everybody today will tell you it's either golden or it's an old washed up paper that means nothing anymore. The Pursuit of Happiness. Isn't that that Will Smith movie? <laughs> that's, that's basically where. That is <laughs> where. That's how futuristic they were. They saw Will Smith making that movie <laughs> that long ago. Mm.